Hey everybody, I'd like to tell you about a real unusual week I just had. My name's Kevin, I'm a solo driver for Crete Carrier and this is the joy of trucking, so hit that subscribe button. I wanna tell you a story about this week. I had the same trailer for nine days straight and that may seem like no big deal to some of you out there, but when you're OTR driving with the drive-in division of a mega carrier, it's usually dropping hooks all the time. So what happened was I had five lives in a row, either a live load or a live unload at the beginning or end of a run. So that took me right through nine days with the same trailer. I was, I was really getting to like that trailer too. All started last Friday in Denver, picked up a trailer loaded with flour at a mill and took it down to Phoenix, Arizona. So, drop and hook, picked up the trailer, right? I get down to Phoenix, live unload. This is at a Costco, by the way, and, and you may know that Crete recently picked up the Costco account, so this is the second time I've been to a Costco. They, they you, got a, you got a guard house or a gate house or whatever you wanna call it, they tell you to go over to that waiting area so you park with a bunch of other fellas, and they give you a little, a little square thing that lights up and makes noise and vibrates and stuff like that. Kind of like when you go to some of these restaurants and they say, oh, just wait over there and your little your little thing will go, your little pager will go off when your table's ready. So that's what they do at Costco. So you're sitting there with this thing on the dashboard and minding your own business and biding your time and then the thing starts vibrating and it tells you the dock and you go to the dock and it's a live unload. That's how it's gone both times I've been to Costco now in the last month or so. Trailer's empty, same trailer. Off I go to Miami, Arizona, not Miami, Florida, which is east of Phoenix, up Highway 60, past Superior, up into the up into the mountains on the east side of Arizona. Beautiful country, twisty, windy road, going over some really, really high arch bridges in the mountains up there. And I went to this huge copper mine. And they not only mine the copper, but they also refine it and smelt it and turn it into actual copper. So when I got there, it was a live load. And they loaded me up with copper rod and I proceeded up to Ogden, Utah, just north of Salt Lake City. That was a live unload and a live load at the same place. So I didn't have to go far. I didn't have to deadhead far with the trailer, but uh, on and off again, live load, live unload, whatever. So there I am in Ogden, Utah, waiting to get unloaded. And this place is first come, first serve, and I'm like fourth in line. And I don't mind the view. I can see the mountains up the side of the valley, all covered in snow. They're really, really tall there. It was beautiful. But after more than an hour sitting there waiting for my turn, I got a message from my, uh, from my manager. He's like, hey, are they unloading you yet? And I answered, nope, not yet. Might be another hour or two. Next, he sent the bill of lading number for the next load because I was unloading at that place and then going to load up my next load at the same place. So zero deadhead miles. As it turned out, though, the layout of the place is the receiving doors are on one side of the building and the shipping doors are way around the other side of this huge warehouse, right? So that, well, I got this, I got this number for the next load. I'm going to go and see if it's even ready. Maybe I'll be stuck here even longer. So I got out of the truck and I went all the way around the building, went to the shipping door. I was talking to somebody there. I says, uh, I said, yeah, I'm from Crete. I'm, I'm waiting to get un unloaded over there at receiving, but my next load is at the same place here. So I'll be waiting for you to load me up. And I was just wondering if the order's even ready. The lady says, well, actually you'll, you'll still be over there on the receiving side because you got these, these, uh, lo this load of uh, copper rod that we're gonna load you up with and you're gonna take down to Alabama, I says, wait a minute. That's exactly what I brought you here. Here, you know, I wonder I wonder if it's the same stuff you're gonna take off my trailer and put right back on the trailer. She said, wait a minute, let me check. So she, she sniffs around, she talks to her boss. She says, look, we're gonna leave the load on your trailer and just give you the next bill of lading and away you go. So I thought, wow, that's great. So what they had to do was take record the, the item numbers of the rolls of rod that I was bringing them and then put it on the next bill rather than the other six loads, uh, pallets that they were going to give me. So basically, I didn't, ha I didn't have to get unloaded and reloaded 
they basically just took the bill from the load I was bringing and handed me the bill for the load that was going out and I got back in my truck and away I went. So I was there over an hour waiting to get unloaded before all this happened, but as luck would have it, another 20 minutes and I was gone. I didn't, I didn't have to pull up to the dock at all. That was pretty interesting too. So, you know, I guess uh, in, a, in a sense, it pays to be proactive, you know, to, to look at your next load and, and just check on things and figure out what's what and maybe things will go your way too. Took that load all the way down to Alabama. That was, that was a good long run. That was three days, 1800 miles. And once I got there, it was a live unload again. So there's five in a row, either live load or live unload. I've been dragging this trailer from Friday clear through to Saturday the next weekend. Very unusual for me because usually I'm, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get a different trailer on almost every load I do. Almost. It's very unusual to have the same trailer for that long. I've, I've even had days where I've, I've pulled three different trailers in the same day. You know, drop and hook here, drop and hook there, running all over the place. So that was very interesting. Uh, a couple of things about that ride too. When I got to the uh, copper refinery out in Miami, Arizona, there was a, a little safety program. Like you had to go through this list of rules and things and sign that you understood them. And they supplied you with a hard hat. First time only, next time you bring your own. And they have safety glasses and you have to wear your vest and you have to have uh, safety toes on your shoes and no pets allowed on their property, no children, no, no people under 18 years old. So a lot of rules, a lot of stuff to learn. They even give you this little card that shows you've had their little safety class and it's good for a year. So the next time you go back, you just show the card and you don't have to go through all that again. Uh, so that was very interesting. And to see some of the process of, uh, of, of what happens, you know, as they're making the copper. And the load I had from Utah, I went across I-80 from Salt Lake City toward Cheyenne, Wyoming, where I spent the night at the company terminal there. But that, that evening's ride was a little precarious. Now we've had some record low temperatures over this past week. And I checked the weather carefully for that, that stretch in particular, because I know I-80 is treacherous at, at this time of year. Uh, there's, there's snowstorms and often the roads closed and you got to chain up or they just they just tell you to shut down and wait it out or whatever and the weather for that day and the following day showed that it was you know the temperatures were were below 20 degrees in that neighborhood so I know it was cold but there was no chance of snow so I didn't think I'd get I'd get hung up by the weather too much but what I did notice driving down that highway a lot of ice on the highway in, in different sections I even saw about a half a dozen trucks that had gone off the road and were in the ditch. Nobody had rolled over, so I give the drivers credit, you know, like they, they didn't actually flip their trucks, but they had just gone shooting right off the road. Uh, often on a straight stretch too, it's not like they were on a curve and they, they just, you know, slid right off, off the curve. It was on a straight stretch of highway, suddenly the truck is out in a field. So that was pretty scary, and when you see stuff like that, you slow down, man. You don't, even I'm driving on a dry, clear asphalt for 10, 15 miles, and and all of a sudden you're on this ice again, you know. So I, I just I just kept it slow the whole time. It was crazy. Another thing about that stretch, I passed five different elk herds, and close enough to the highway. If I'd thrown a rock, I probably would have probably would have hit one. It was it was pretty cool. A lot of wildlife along that stretch of road. So that was pretty neat. And then the last load, the last load on Saturday, I did have a live unload with that, that load from uh, Salt Lake and then deadheaded up the road about 15 miles. And the next one was a drop and hook. So that's where I finally got rid of that, that trailer I'd been pulling for nine days straight. And now I'm on my way up to Chicago. I'll be there Monday morning, on we go. So that's, that's a crazy kind of week I've had <clears throat> even got a, a bit of a sore throat out of it there with all this cold weather and that's my story for the week with one trailer and it was very unusual so let me know what you think give me a thumbs up comments down below and hit that subscribe button and dingle the notification bell and we'll see you down the road bye for now